we need to talk about China's accelerating housing crash. It's actually increasing by 25% month on month, which is uh, pretty outstanding. I also want to talk about the surprising jump in new home sales reported by National Association of Realtors, or NAR. I think there's some data inside that report that we need to look at. I want to talk about some lessons learned from 2022, personal lessons learned. I want to talk about what I expect for 2023 in the general economy. And then finally, some recommendations on how to prepare for what I think will be a uh, messy 2023. Let's jump right into it. Let's talk about China home prices. Folks, if you've been on this channel for any length of time, you know that our discussion of home prices in China started from Evergrande, uh, that bankruptcy. Um, when was that? About 18 months ago, it kind of first came to, to bear. Since then, there have been a lot of additional interesting decisions made by the government. You are now starting to see a pretty consistent trend in home price depreciation, home price falling in China. It is interesting because, again, if you remember the Chinese populace, a second home really is their savings account. Uh, but you also need to be careful when you look at statistics. Because if I were to say that China home prices fell or accelerated by 25% month on month, I would be accurate in saying that. However, if we look at the underlying data, which again, you can argue real or not, it's not a battle I choose to take. It's just a battle that I, I choose to read and react to. Last month, home sales in the 100 largest cities in China fell 0.06%. Not 0.6%, 0.06%. This year, or this month, again, one month later, they accelerated 25% to a whopping 0.08%. 68 of the top 100 cities did show a decline, which means 32, per, 32 of the 100 showed an increase. Again, I don't know anyone that would really believe the data that comes out of China whether it be housing or GDP or pretty much anything. But it is interesting to see some of the headlines uh, about China's home prices crashing, accelerating, tumbling, where when you actually bring up the article, it went from 0.06 to 0.08. So again, folks, always go the next level deeper. Always go into the numbers. Percentages can be twisted and pulled in lots of different directions. So... Uh, it's about a week ago, National Association of Realtors uh, came out with a surprising jump in home sales. When that report came out, I did remind you that home sales are actually not home closings. You may remember this conversation. It actually doesn't take into account cancellations. They count a new home sale at the point of contract signing, not at the point of closing. So we talked about uh, what percentages those might be declined or canceled. Uh, we talked about historical run rate averages being right around 20% the last three months. I've dug into the data a little bit more, right? We all had a three-day break from recordings. Uh, so I looked at the report in more detail. And surprisingly, actually not surprising, new home sales skewed higher. The jump in new home sales definitely was to the more well-to-do buyer. Some of that is because the first-time home buyers simply don't have supply to go after. But yes, folks, people with cash and people with equity from other, uh, maybe an equity line or something, definitely stepped up. So 62% of new construction homes were over 400 grand, which again, simple math says 38% were below 400. So uh, pretty interesting to look at. When you do look at home sales or really the housing market, Home starts are down 16% and permits are down 22%. So the housing market is acting just like we have discussed. Housing market is in a depression. Transactions down 40%, permits down 22, starts down 16. It is exactly what we expect. And this will go on for a while as we put in a floor under the housing market. So one of the things I did dig into is where are rents increasing and where are rents decreasing? I have five states for you that are averaging rent decrease. Um, let me think. I think if I were to guess, I would have only guessed two of these five. Uh, we will start at the bottom. Number five is Virginia. Virginia's rent is down 0.1%. 
Idaho down 1.2%, Maryland down 1.3%, Georgia down 1.2%, and the big one, probably not to be surprised, Nevada. Yes, folks, Nevada down negative 3.9%. I will admit I would have certainly guessed Arizona, uh, but Arizona did not make the list for the state with declining rents. Again, that's Nevada, Georgia, Maryland, Idaho, and Virginia. As for states with the largest increase, uh, the top five, I would have guessed two of these five. I'm actually shocked by number three, four, and five. So we'll go top down. New York, 32% increase. If you've been watching this channel, you know that Manhattan has set a record over 5,000 a month. That's likely pulled uh, New York higher. New York rents are up 32%. 32%. Florida, 25%. Rents in Florida are up, no, I'm sorry, 23, 23%. Now for the three that surprised me. If you invest in one of these markets, I'd love to hear from you. South Dakota, 22%. Yes, folks, rents in South Dakota up 22%. Uh, Nebraska up 16% and Utah up 14. So again, that's New York, Florida, South Dakota, and South Dakota, Nebraska, and Utah. I sat back a lot, probably like a lot of you, and reflected on 2022. These are kind of my five lessons learned. Uh, these are personal lessons learned. Uh, always trying to get better. Uh, number one, run your own race. Stop looking at others' success. Yes, folks, I'm guilty of this, just like lots of you. Lots of you look at big portfolios and go, why not me? I happen to look at other YouTube channels and see other YouTubes growing like weeds and go, why not me? I spend a lot of time looking at these fast-growing channels and going, I don't get it. Uh, Other than being negative all the time, which I won't do, uh, it, it, it is frustrating. I will admit to being envious, jealous, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I do need to remember to run my own race. Number two, focus on what makes you happy, not what makes you max dollars. Again, this has come to me in lots of different ways. First and foremost, again, I won't, I won't feed the YouTube algorithm with negativity. It's not where I choose to be. I believe feeding the YouTube algorithm with negativity actually is a short-term bump for long-term pain. I do believe by showing my exact business, my wins and losses, that we will somehow overcome this together. I have, you know, that's my belief. We shall see. Uh, and again, I I am not in this for maximizing dollars. I don't know if you know this, uh, but I have been approached uh, probably monthly uh, to sponsor whatever other stuff. And I have declined. Uh, it's not, not something I want to do on this channel. Uh, so I won't, not to say that I never will, if there was something I actually used and felt good about it, uh, we could do that. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to be reading one of those, uh, sponsor, you know, things. So yeah, whatever, not me. Number three, haters are part of the deal. Uh, as the channel has grown and my influence has grown, the the hater list is long. It is probably even accelerating. Uh, I think haters are part of this process and maybe getting more is a good thing. Uh, I just need to understand that hate uh, is part of this. Kind of tied into number three for me is number four, delete, block, nasty people. I don't mind if you disagree with me. I don't mind if you share another idea that you are thinking about. In fact, I encourage it. Uh, but if you come out and just are nasty, I won't think uh, I won't think about it for a second, deleting your comment and blocking you immediately. Uh, frankly, if you attack one of my guests in any way, that's another way, right? They come on this channel. They don't deserve hate. Uh, so if you don't like what they're saying, don't watch that channel. They have their own playlist. They come back regularly. And then finally, uh, we need to be celebrating other wins. And that's why this is my number one goal. We will go through this later. We got a lot of people getting their first and next deals. We will we will read that list off at the end. I need to celebrate this more. I need some selfies. I want to fill my office up with pictures. So if you get one of these, please um, uh, you know, take a picture, selfie, all of that. So those are my lessons from 2022. What do I expect in 2023? 
Uh, one of the things that I think is going to be very obvious is bankruptcies, both at the corporate and individual level. We have seen a lot of stimulus ballers at the individual level going to go bust. We are already seeing crazy discounts on luxury vehicles. I don't know if you guys have looked up um, Lamborghini SUVs. I think it's called the Urus or something. Uh, they are popping up left and right on Auto Trader and all of this. Uh, people are uh, maybe they used them as tax write-offs. Who knows? Uh, but we are starting to see luxury vehicles come back. Watches are falling. It just has to happen. But we're also going to see bankruptcies at the corporate level. It's not individuals only. Uh, there are, by some accounts, 20% of zombie companies in the Russell 2000. Some of them will refi debt. Some of them will get bought. But there will be plenty of bankruptcies. We have lived in a fake economy for a long time. Uh, and we need to clean it. And part of that is the bankruptcy process. I expect there to be a lot of acquisitions. Uh, we have already started to see some cash-based acquisitions. I believe as a recession kicks in, uh, recessions will be you, or I'm sorry, the recession will bring to bear acquisitions with debt and equity. Uh, we will start to see um, tuck in acquisitions, bolt on acquisitions. Uh, it will be pretty prevalent probably in the second half of the year. I do expect it to be a pretty rough year for IPOs, initial public offerings, and SPACs. I believe the land of free money is over. And uh, those are going to be in hibernation for quite a while. Lastly, how do you personally, individually, at the family unit level, prepare for 2023? I think there are certain things you should plan on. And then, hey, if it doesn't happen, you are prepared. First and foremost, higher interest rates. Everything you want to borrow is going to be more expensive, whether that be houses, credit cards, cars, student loans, whatever it happens to be. Prepare for higher interest rates. Really make sure you have exhausted that return. Because again, today you can get 4% in a bond, All right, a 10-year bond, roughly 4%. So realize that's now the base return. It's not zero. So again, there will be a lot of people taking that 4%. I mean, how many of you would like 4% last year? Lots of us lost 20%, right? Well, again, I think there's going to be a lot of people coming off a of bad 2022 going, you know what? I'm not very good at this. I'm going to stick it in a bond. I'm going to take my 4% coupon and call it a day. I was right there with you. Uh, instead of doing bonds, however, I chose to do real estate back in 2002. Uh, but I do understand. Uh, I believe inflation will be sticky. I believe even if you believe Peter Schiff or Kathy Wood or uh, Gunlock, any of these folks and Musk, Elon Musk, that inflation is going to come crashing down and deflation is actually the concern above all concerns. I think it is prudent to plan for sticky inflation. And then, hey, if we get deflation, all good. You're not really hurt. I think planning for deflation and then getting sticky inflation will actually cause a lot of pain. So I would strongly suggest that you plan for sticky inflation. What is sticky inflation? I believe uh, we will get from 9-1, which is the peak, to 6% pretty quickly. In fact, I believe we see six a six handle this month when headline CPI is reported. I don't believe we go from six to four very quickly. Maybe it's the summer, maybe it's the fall. And then I don't think we get sub four for over a year. So again, plan for it. If we're wrong, we're wrong. Something going into this economy, job security is an asset. Yes, job security is an asset. Remember what we've talked about on this channel for not six or nine months, get close to revenue. And I'm not talking new revenue, right? You could be part of the next business line that uh, is going to revolutionize the company. But if it doesn't produce anything, it produces a big fat zero and it costs the company 10 million bucks a quarter while you're creating this next great widget, you can be cut. I was an executive that cut a business line, a product, because it had no revenue. When it gets bad, folks, survival goes right to the top of the list. So again, if you're a sales rep, I would rather farm than hunt for the next year. Farm means your install base. Hunt means new logos. Number four, please, please, please do not expect any kind of V-shaped bounce in the stock market. Again, if you get it, congratulations. But let's not plan for, hope for, have hopium that we are once again going to get a March or April of 2020. If it happens, great. If it doesn't, you're not hurt. I think going all in and buying early on the dip 
raging to the moon or whatever you want to call it is not appreciating the opportunity cost of cash, right? Cash is value. And then finally, if you ever wanted a fancy toy like the Lumberjack, an orange Lamborghini, your time is coming. If you ever wanted that Rolex presidential, your time is coming. If you ever wanted a fancy Louis bag or shoes or whatever, your time is coming. These stimulus ballers who did stupid things with because money was given away or taken in fraud, frankly, with these PPP loans, uh, you need to uh, realize that you may be able to buy a toy for pennies on the dollar. Uh, so again, folks, that's what I got for you. Let's read off a bunch of congratulations, folks. Do me a favor. Congratulate people doing the work. Jason, congratulations on your next deal. Pedro, congratulations on your first deal. Cassidy, congratulations on your first deal. Angel, congratulations on your first deal. That's actually Angel Jr. And we have Angel Sr. Yes, father, son. How cool is that? Got their first deals. Nishant, congratulations on your next deal. Totana, congratulations on your next deal. Corey, you actually get three if memory serves. Corey, yes, folks, these cards here, these black cards, you can get as many of these as deals you close. The gold cards, you only get one, but you can get three, 10, 15, 20 of these. Again, we're trying to do 1,000 of these. So, Corey, congratulations on your third. Michael, congratulations on yours. And, Michael, you actually got two. So, again, folks, what are these? These are my number one goal for 2023. I want to send out a thousand black cards and one at least one hundred gold cards. So if I helped you in any way, please uh, send me a note, DM me on Instagram, or wipe off my website. Lastly, you still have a day or so if you want to buy the course "How to Get Started One Rental at a Time" at three hundred and twenty bucks. It is going up to four hundred dollars this week. It includes my mastermind, which uh, we're going to talk to Millennial Mike here in a moment. So again, folks. Have an amazing day. It is January 2nd. Take care. Bye.